Okay, welcome everybody to today's meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. Uh, I'll just ask you to indicate your presence vocally, Sharon. Here. Alex. Here. Jennifer. Here. Christine. Here. And Austin is here. Okay. Approval of the minutes of September 27th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to pass the minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay. Any corrections to the minutes? Okay. So um, on the motion to approve the minutes, um, Alex, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Thank you. Jennifer, how do you vote? Yes. Christine, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Sharon? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay. Town manager report. There's no town manager present. So I think we will skip the town manager's report. Number four, finance update. Jennifer? Um, I don't have anything to update, but I have the bills ready to be approved when we're ready. Uh, we could do that now whenever you, you want to present them. That would be great. Okay. Um, I don't have the ability to share screen. I don't know All what right. I need to do for that. That's okay. There you go. <laughs> Sharon's going to make magic happen. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, so can everybody see this? Not yet. Ah, oh, there, there we it are. is. There it is. Okay. So there's three bills to be approved. The first one is the OPM bill. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit so you can see. So total due for this bill, 7984 And just remind us, Jennifer, this is an invoice for what period? This is an invoice for uh, through September 30th. Okay. Thank you. Um, the second one is for FAA. Um, this looks like the re the revisions um, first, and this was at September 30th also. And I'm just gonna, if you need me to stop anywhere, just let me know. Yeah, it would be good to see what the total is that we're being asked to approve. Yeah, so the total for this one is 18,000. 177.25. Okay. And then the last one is the standard. I don't know if it's standard, but it, this is a monthly one for the month of September and for FAA as well. And this looks like schematic design, design development. Oh, wait a minute. What are we? I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this. Is This is for construction documents this part that's more than the monthly tim you were not but this is at 70 percent. so the other other these two are already at 100 so it's a portion of this yeah it looks like um it looks like that this is for uh, a portion of the construct of that 70 percent construction documents so basically they're saying they're up to 70 percent. but i was just trying to look up the last bill to see what um what percentage they were up to. Okay. So, and this is the total for this invoice, 136,250. So and there's those... three invoices, one from Collier's, two from FAA. Correct. Okay. The FAA invoice is 136,250. Uh, Tim, again, can you clarify what what the 136.250 is covering. That's for the construction documents portion. Um, that's not any of the ad services. That's, you know, they have a, a contract for $681,250 right. for construction documents. And it looks like they're, um, they submitted a bill on, um, at the end of, August and then at the end of um, July, um, the August bill was the same amount, one thirty six two fifty, 
the um, the bill at the end of July was for 204, 375. Um, and this one is dated 930, is that correct? Yes. Yes. So, um, yeah, they have, so this is the third bill for the construction documents. I'm, I'm sorry to be confused, Tim. Uh, the the fee says for construction documents the fee says six eighty one two fifty is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Earned? What does earned mean? Basically, how much they they're billing against that six eighty one two fifty. So they're saying that they're they're billing seventy percent of that six eighty one two fifty. Okay. And so they're saying you know this is how much we've earned to date. This is what we've been paid to date. So the difference is our current bill, which is this 136,250. Correct. The difference between 681 and 176 is 136,250. Well, the difference between what they've what they've earned all all total and and previously billed. So they're saying that they they've their fee of earned to date is is 1.3 or yeah 1.348. But they've billed 1.212. So what they haven't billed, which is this bill, is the 136,250. I see. The 136,250 is the difference between the total fee and the previous fee billing. Thank you. That's very yeah. helpful. But yeah. I just also I just want to apologize. I don't know why my camera keeps on turning off on me. So I just noticed that it is it's coming and going. So if that happens, okay. I apologize. So we have three invoices. If someone would move the approval and then we get a second, then we we talk about them. I'm going to move the approval. So um, moved. I'll second. Sure. Okay. Are there any questions about these three invoices? Okay. Voting to approve. Sharon? Yes. Alex? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Christine? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank, thank you very much. Jennifer, do you have anything else for us, Jennifer? I do not at this time. All right, thanks so much. If you take down the screen share, that would be very helpful. That's fabulous. Okay, number five on the agenda, Colliers. Um, okay, um, we just talked about a little bit about what we've been, um, what's been happening on the project. Right. Um, we are out for our seventy-five percent uh, estimate with um, with for the two estimators. Um, Will has been dealing back and forth asking for uh making sure they're covering certain things that uh, we're required to do um um you know for some of the grants that we're hoping to get so um, backing making sure that we're having them estimate based on um whether we have to use uh, davis bacon wage rates or whether we have to uh, buy america build america buy america program um, but so those are coming in, uh, Will, when are those coming in? We have an est uh, estimate reconciliation meeting next week. Yes, that is next Thursday. Thursday, and we're hoping to get the estimates this Friday or uh, maybe given through the weekend. We'll get them Monday. Okay. Um, and um, we've gone through a couple meetings with the um, Historic Commission in town. Um, yep. First one was really based on um, site um, the second meeting, more uh, interior, exterior of the building, um, a lot of focus on, um, you know, the landscape, the, the the book drop and different things like that. Um, but um, that was approved. So that's a, a milestone that uh, we can check off, which is great. Yep. Planning um, is still in the works. So a submission has been submitted um, and a meeting is scheduled for the 15th of November um, with the planning board. Um, we met with the fire department to review the drainage that's going to be going through their, their lot, uh, just make sure that they understand the scope and durations, timelines, um, that sort of thing. Um, also just looking at, um, any of the other impacts we may have on street parking or the bus stop out in front of the library, um, just all of those types of uh, issues and trying to, um, either meet with neighbors to, to talk about the project, just let them know what's going to be happening. 
um, um, and anything that may may have to change to make sure that we have um, uh, a temporary uh, plan in place for for that type of thing. Um, there's also some investigation going on on this um, Inflation Reduction Act and what potential grants that uh, might be possible to be achieved based on uh, federal monies that we could get. Um, and then we had, um, we've been going back and forth about um, bringing on a, a hazardous material consultant to do some additional testing. There was some testing done in 2016 um, but now that we have a more comprehensive design, bringing them on to really look to see how where we're going to be impacting the existing building, making sure we're covering all the bases of uh, uh, what our, our scope would be for that. So they'll be also be doing the design specifications. Um, and then we'd be working with either them or a different party during construction just to monitor the actual asbestos contractor or abatement contractor. Um, but uh, a lot of different activities um, going on. I don't know, Will, if there's something major that I missed. Uh, but uh, those are uh, kind of a sprinkling of some of the activities we've been doing. Now, just wrapping up the, well, the uh, FAA is wrapping up the actual documents and all years on our end, we're getting ready for the next phase, which will be bidding, which majority of that will happen end of this year, beginning of 2024. Okay. Questions for Colliers. So I have a question, Tim. Sure. Uh, as our owner's project manager, could you talk to us a little bit about, uh, in your view, the performance of FAA? Um, sure. Um, I think, you know, FAA is... Um, is doing doing well. I mean, they got some things uh, that may have typically been in their scope that we were broken out and we're having them do. And, and so um, it may appear that some of the stuff is, is being done at the last minute, but it was really just that um, um, it's kind of out of sequence, maybe a little bit, um, that things are, are being added to the project that maybe they, they might not typically do, or sometimes they would typically do, but for whatever reason, it was broken out um, earlier on. But I think overall, they're doing good. We were past our, uh, seem to be passing our requirements for the tally, so the energy um, measurements. Um, they were very helpful and instrumental in, in getting the all the information needed to all the different um, boards um, and committees. And, um, Amherst is a little bit different than other communities. They yep. ask for a little bit more information than maybe um, would be typical. Um, so that has been provided. Um, you know, what really will be the, the biggest uh, judge of, of how good their documents are is once we get um, uh, bidders on board or bidders out to bid and see what kind of questions we get from the actual trades. Um, but we do have, again, those two estimators. They're not just looking at what the cost of the project is going to be they're looking at the scope of the project. So how detailed are those documents so that they may not agree that a brick, you know, a square foot of brick costs this, or, you know, the other one may say it costs something else, but if they're looking at the square footage or the interpretation of the thickness of the slabs or the uh, amount of steel, um, you wanna make sure that there's a consistent view by two independent parties of what is included in this project. Um, and that hopefully translate into bidders all looking at it the same as well. So you don't get a, a wide range of numbers. Right. So I'm going to repeat back to you what I've understood. You, you uh, you, you've worked with a lot of architects on a lot of projects in so far as you're able to say Collier's, uh, Collier's FAA is doing a, a good job on this project. Yes, I think so. Okay. Great. Any other questions for Collier's? We appreciate the work that you're doing with FAA to get us, you know, teed up for the various uh, boards and committees um, that we have to uh, that we have to deal with in the um, in, in the town. That's an important part of the work, not only just to make sure that we satisfy the various requirements, but also it's a, an important part of what I would call the public education part of the project, where we are educating various boards and committees, but also the uh, public participants in those those events okay 
So, if no other question for Colliers, then subcommittees, design, Christine. I have nothing to report. Thank you. Alex, outreach. Um, I don't have anything specific per se to report, but just wanted to let the committee know that the library has a justice equity uh, diversity and inclusion committee, and they recently released a survey to the community looking uh, sort of a broad scope initially about how welcoming the library is. Um, but we're looking forward to them expanding on that survey and possibly informing when it comes time to uh, put everything back in the building that we're doing it in a way that is welcoming to our entire community. And so just want to put that on people's radar as something to be thinking about when we get to that phase that we want to be um, getting information back from that committee that we use as part of our decision making process around art, uh, where things go in the library, et cetera. Great. Thank you. OK, any question for Alex? All right, thanks. Well, the next item is correspondence. So the board, uh, the committee uh, has received correspondence from Robert Pam, uh, dated uh, October 11th, 2023. Uh, Mr. Pam asks, will the board room or the Woodbury room have facilities to record and transmit meetings and performances? It might make it easier for us to hold publicly accessible meetings of our committees. And if we host lectures, debates, shows, et cetera, might be good to be able to share them simultaneously or subsequently. I don't know whether we can hook into the town setups for the building. Sharon, do you want to answer that question? Uh, yeah, so uh, my initial response was it really, um, the wiring will all be in place, but ultimately it will come down to um, the funding that we have. Um, we'll determine what kind of equipment we can we can purchase. Um, I didn't know if, you know, Tim or Will, if you wanted to expound on that. Sure. Um, so we will have um, um, data drops in the room. We'll have wireless access points. Um, but whether we have um, um, mounted cameras in the room or something to facilitate um, our public meetings, um, any kind of a mixing board that you would use to put together some sort of um, um, broadcast, if you will. I don't know that we would have that. Um, we're working to uh, bring on um, and get that design finished up for um, get uh, estimates for the estimated cost of equipment. So we don't have that just yet, um, but the building will have the basics um, and then um, equipment may need to be brought in uh, if we can't um, fit it within our budget. Um, and then maybe it's something that can be purchased at a later time to uh, make it a, a permanent installation. Are there facilities to record and transmit meetings built into our budget at this point? I would say um, no. We have um, we're talking about some smaller meeting rooms where we were having a setup to have a um, the ability to do Zoom meetings and that sort of thing. But in in the larger um main meeting room downstairs uh, we don't have that equipment built into the budget okay so if we're going to uh, have that equipment it's going to have to come from funds not part of a, the the building budget they have to come from some other source either some other source or we do really well at bid day and yeah. um, and things come in low hopefully fingers crossed um bob oh yeah alex I just want to clarify um, that what so Sharon had commented that we would much much like the cafe where we are going to be wired and plumbed yep. for something in the future. It, that is the same. So it, it would be a matter of purchasing equipment, not a matter of having to go into and, yep. and rewire things. I just want to clarify that's that's the case. Great, good. So hopefully a grant or a good bid. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, the second question is, at the ground floor garden level, it appears that the Civil War tablets room and the Special Collections room across from the Burnett Gallery are part of the original building and therefore are three steps higher than the hall they connect to. I don't see any stairs in the drawings. Am I missing something? Sharon? Yeah, I, I don't know how to describe this, but there are stairs there. Um, 
yeah, all the rooms are handicapped accessible. Stairs are there. Okay. All right. Alex, did you want to say something? Your hand is up. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I think, but in the meeting packet, I think you included. So in the meeting packet, there's actually where the stairs are. I think you circled it. So just pointing that out. Yeah, I just want members of the public to hear what the responses were, if that's okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Just, yeah, I'm just making sure members of the public knew if they looked in the packet, they could see it since she wasn't right. able to describe the spot. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, anything else? Um, topics not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Nothing to me. Public comment. We have um, six, eight members of the public. Anybody wanting to make a comment if they'd raise their virtual hand, we'll bring you into the the Zoom. Bob Pam. Um, <clears throat> two points. So one is that at your last meeting, you had deferred until this meeting my comments from uh, September 20th. Got it. So I'd like to add those back in. Sure. The second is um, with respect to the second question that, that you've responded to, um, the stairs that you referred to lead not to those two rooms, but rather to other rooms in there, in the back. The only doors into the Civil War tablet and the uh, room for the special collection, um, there's only one entrance to each of those and it is not connected to any stairway Be also behind it there is a uh, hallway which leads from an exterior door behind all of those rooms to the rest of the uh, original building in the special collections and that unfortunately also is a connection between a high floor and a low floor and i don't see any connection between those two so there's three different entryways which as far as i can tell involve a foot or more of of raising uh, of jumping up jumping down and i don't think that the answer of there being one you know 100 feet down the hall um, is in fact useful at all for these questions thank you bob so on the, the new question. Bob, if you just hold on that one. Tim, do you want to say anything about what Bob just observed? Well, I'd have to take a look at the drawings and pull them up, but um, certainly all the rooms will be accessible. Um, so if 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 they're at different levels, there be, might be a different elevator stop or um, a, a ramp, um, but I, I'd have to pull up the drawings. and. So and let's get an answer to this question, okay? Yeah, so this is access to the special collections area. And what was the other room? The, the ground floor garden level, it appears that the Civil War tablets room and the special collections room across from the Burnett Gallery are part of the original building and therefore are three steps higher than the hall they connect to. I don't see any stairs in the drawing. Am I missing something? I then supplemented that with the question about the hallway behind it. Um, Tim, are you looking at the drawings? Yeah, I'm trying to pull them up. It just takes a while. Okay. All right, then uh, let me go back to the first question that I had asked in September. Um, and there, the, the first question I had asked was that, although in all other areas, the budget constraints have been very tight and increases in any one area have been limited for the landscaping, which was added to the site plan, um, that added almost 40% to the cost. And, you know, Given that it has now been reviewed by the Historical Commission and everybody else, my guess is that you are now committed to the design and the cost that's associated with the landscaping. Um, but I was just curious why that one had not been subject to the same kinds of 
cost limitations as everything else in this project. Everything has been subject to the same kind of cost limitations. We've looked at everything from the perspective of what its costs were and how it fit within the budget. Landscaping was not exempted from it. We didn't do the same kind of value engineering um, exercise that you were describing, if, if I'm understanding what you were describing. But everything in the project has been subject to the same scrutiny in terms of where it fits in the budget. And let me ask the question differently. Up until um, this most recent budget estimate in June, the amount that was set aside for site work was $2.1 million. The amount that was set in June was $2.9 million. That is an $800,000 difference. And that is a lot more than anything else that you have done. I will not go further with this. I just pointed out because that seemed to me to be inconsistent. The other question that I had asked was about F, F, and E, which had not been subject to any of the cost estimators uh, giving any uh, inflator value to that. And so it has been carried at basically the, the same number for a long time. And I suggested that it's probably not accurate to assume that there has been no cost changes for any of the F, F, and E. And based upon what the other things have been marked up, it looked like that would have to go up by something around $400,000. Okay, what, do, you have, do you have anything else you wanna say, Bob? Those are the two points that I had raised on that. Right. There were two other points that I had asked, um, which had to do with rainfall and therefore the capacity of the drain pipes and of the swale. Yep. Um, and the fourth point, I guess we have addressed at the last meeting, which had yep. to do with um, the stonework. Yep. And I think the, the third point was also addressed at the last meeting about the, the drain pipes. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Any other member of the public wish to speak? Okay. Nobody else wishing to speak. Okay, I think we are. Um, I think we are all set. Uh, Sharon, just remind us when is our next uh, building committee meeting? November fifteenth. Yes. At four thirty. Yes. Okay. All right, everybody. Meetings adjourned. Stay well. Thank you very much. Thank you.